My name is Damon Richardson, and welcome to today's presentation of our 203K program, one of our you know, uh, renovation lending tools that we've made available you know, uh, you know, to the mass public. I'm very happy to be here with you guys today to discuss the program, to really help everybody get a, uh, you know, a, a much better perspective on renovation lending as a whole, and certainly to understand the administration of our particular program. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Damon Richardson, and I imagine that most of you probably have, you know, don't know me at all. But just to give you a, a, a brief background, I am a 13-year mortgage world veteran. I've spent my entire adult life in this business, and I've worked really at every level in operations. You know, starting off, you know, 13 years ago as a processor, and then eventually transitioning into the world of underwriting. Um, from there. You know, I have been, you know, an underwriter. I have actually worked at every level, you know, from wholesale and then all the way up into a corporate, uh, you know, corporate retail banking. And to be honest with you, the place where I feel most at home is, you know, really here in this wholesale world. And considering my upbringing, in the, you know, in this universe that I started in an originating office, you know, I'm always going to be very service oriented. I, I, I can't let myself ever forget that each and every single one of you as originators have a borrower that's attached to this process. And this is not just a number to them. This is, you know, the culmination of a lot of big decisions, you know, maybe even some slow searching, you know, saving money and preparing themselves for this transaction. So I'm always going to remember that and I always will, you know, carry that respect and level of reverence every time we talk about doing any mortgage in general. But today I am very happy to talk to you specifically about our, you know, our venerable FHA 203K program and all of the, uh, you know, the value-adding features really that Redmond has brought into the process of taking care of a 203K loan because at this point in time, it's time to really peel back that veil of mystery on the 203K and I'm here to let you guys know, honestly and truly, you can't do a 203K loan without first really realizing that it is a regular FHA mortgage first and foremost with just some subtle tweaks at the end of it that helps it to actually uh, facilitate making renovations to a borrower's property you know, in the first place. So let us get this show on the road and let's take the first step toward getting this broader understanding you know, of the program. To do that first, for any of you that are not familiar with Remen at all, I really have to tell you, you know, the first part of the process is really to understand us. Remen Wholesale you know, is a company that's been around you know, for quite a while. But our senior management team, these guys, you know, even though the slide here says 25 years, these guys have literally more than 30 years of practical, you know, mortgage banking experience. So we don't have, you know, um, ownership that really, you know, is a, you know, a group of fine MBAs but don't necessarily know this business. They've all sat where you're sitting. They understand, you know, while the, the, the normal, you know, ups and downs and the you know, trials and tribulations attributed to the normal mortgage process. So they've approached everything in terms of creating this company and giving us, you know, a guideline and a, you know, and a path to travel on. There's going to address all of our normal pratfalls and try to make them better, which is why service has been a big part of the DNA of Remen Wholesale for its entire existence. I mean, we've done same day underwriting since day one, and you know, that's not something that we're ever going to walk away from, really. And the big thing about that is we don't just put it out there as you know, part of our marketing, something that we say, you know, it's something that we, you know, that we mean. We adhere to it. And we do so by making sure that you can see our underwriting turn times. What other lender is really putting their individual underwriter turn times on their website and making them publicly available every day? We don't leave our underwriters hidden behind a veil of, you know, invincibility where they can, you know, just make stipulations with, you know, maybe some that don't make sense without being really accountable. Everything here is very transparent, and you can see us for who we are, warts and all. And that is, you know, the reason why we're able to do that is because we honestly do put that best foot forward on a daily basis to try to give you the service that you need. I mean, the bottom line of it, as you can take a look at the bottom of this slide, you can see we're not the number one renovation lender, you know, in the country, but we want to be. The only way we're ever going to make sure that we reach our goals is to make sure that we make you guys look like rock stars. We want you to come off as being very knowledgeable on all of our products and services. We want, you know, we want your borrowers to feel that the decision to work with you and then your decision to work with us is one that will definitely get them the right result. And we can only do this if we're dedicated to our position in servicing you as best as humanly possible. So 
you know, uh, we look at this as a partnership, and we absolutely want to make sure that it is a fruitful partnership for all parties involved. Now, the next step of this is really understanding renovation lending. And for anybody that can understand English and hears the name, renovation lending, you kind of get the basics. This is a mortgage that's going to help you somehow finance a renovation to a property. Aside from that, you know, in this basic form, this program actually is going to allow us to really extend an olive branch and to make a larger premise you know, um, you know, come to the surface. Because this is going to give us the ability to help borrowers really, truly, and responsibly expand the power of their purchasing dollars. We really want to give borrowers an opportunity to not only, you know, have the home, you know, have the dream of home ownership be real to them and to have a home that they can afford, but if we can help them get as many wants from their want list into their home as possible without overextending them, then we've done them more than just a service. We've actually helped make some of their dreams come true. And that's what renovation lending can do for us. And with that awesome power to really help make dreams come true, we're going to be able to really open things up and turn the premise of just working within, you know, within your existing markets, within these communities, we're going to turn this into something that can generate referrals for you in a way that was never possible you know, before. I mean, the bottom line of it, with renovation lending, you're going to be able to take a borrower that maybe couldn't afford a property that was turnkey with modern amenities at the top of the market right now, and you can help them find a more affordable home that they, they can then transform, and they can do them one better. Instead of just having a cookie cutter, you know, um, new construction home that's you know builder grade everything, you can actually help them find you know a gem of a property in terms of value that they can then customize to their own specifications to meet their needs. So if the home doesn't have the bedroom count that, you know, that they're looking for, that can be addressed. You know, if it's a little small and needs additional square footage, exactly the amount of square footage and how to use that space can be addressed. If they want to add an ensuite bathroom you know, to, a master, to a new master bedroom to create their own master retreat, then they can do that. And they can do that completely to their specification and, and, and desires because this is a chance not just to, uh, and I'm quoting a wiser man than myself here, but not just to you know, create a new home or create a custom home, but to create their home, a home that they've always held to be their ideal dream home. And we can do that. And with that opportunity to help borrowers create that custom dream home, we are going to give you the ability to seize control in your individual market like you've never been able to before. Now, everybody here that can hear the sound of my voice, I know you realize the key to business has always been referrals. We need referrals in order to, you know, to, to you know, feed the machine, to keep everything moving forward. And that's how you make you know, the easiest going of generating business. By taking part in renovation lending, you're absolutely going to open up the opportunity to generate more referrals than you've ever been able to generate before. Aside from your normal, you know, realtor relationship where, you know, your realtor stops by and if you're their favorite guy or not, you know, maybe they'll drop you off a few loans a month, maybe you only get one or two hard luck cases that are having a hard time moving. But when you look a realtor in the eye and tell them that you can take the 220-day listing that's, you know, set to expire shortly and help them market that home in a way where it can sell immediately, you're going to open their eyes to, you know, to new possibilities. And that's what renovation lending exactly can do. It can take their dirty dogs. It can take all of those homes that they have a hard time moving and give them an ability to market them with a potential renovation plan that can catch the eye of any potential home buyer in that individual market. So you're going to be able to pick up more loans from your realtor, not to mention since you're actually helping them you know, uh, you know, you know, actually convert more potential home buyers into homeowners you're certainly going to become a favorite stop you know, along their line of people that they're going to you know, go to to procure financing for their deals. Outside of that, you're also going to have the ability to individually work with service providers in your area. If you see contractors that you know, um, are you know, augmenting jobs you know, uh, because borrowers just don't have you know, enough funds to go through with the vision that they truly had, you know, they, they truly had initially with their first consultation, you're going to be able to work with these contractors to finance some of these deals. You know, so that they can actually get through and help these borrowers really achieve their dream of what they want their home to look like. Because this program works not just for purchase market, but for the refinance market as well. You're going to be able to truly take borrowers' abilities and enhance them. So if you have a you know a borrower that already feels that they live in the perfect place, however, another kid's on the way, this home just isn't big enough. They can do a two or three k 
do a two or three K refinance to add in that bedroom that they need to give them, you know, a, a new family room or a larger den, you know, or a playroom. We can make all of these dreams actually happen. So borrowers will have the ability, you know, to renovate instead of move. You know, or if they or if they absolutely need to move to get to that better location, to certainly not need to buy a home priced at the top of the market in order to get all the features and amenities in the home that they truly, truly want. Now, overall, by definition, our 203K program is a single closed mortgage. So this is a regular 203B mortgage, really, with all the normal you know qualifications for credit, income, and everything else. But the difference here is that we're actually going to, A, determine the value of the property based on what it will be worth in the future. And, you know, in the second aspect of it, after making that determination, we're going to now give them the money to uh, make these finance, to make these repairs to the property. We're going to finance them in with the mortgage. They don't need to qualify a second time. This isn't a construction loan with a conversion. They're going to have their forever mortgage on the day of closing, and they're going to save money by not needing to, uh, to qualify a second time, pay for a second closing, or anything else like that. It's just going to be a straight matter of closing, beginning the work, having that work completed, and then they can move into their brand new custom home. Now, overall, inside of the 203K program, there is an ability to do an amazing amount of work to a home and to really transform it from you know, a home that you know, could have possibly been an REO property that was distressed all the way into you know something that is more than just livable, but certainly is a representation of the borrower's real ideal dream home, their forever home, having all the features and amenities that they've always you know dreamt of having. The list that you see here on this slide, this list is comprised of many different things, ranging from you know minor cosmetic changes, all the way up to full-on structural additions, where you know uh, we can talk about you know. Uh, Adding in, you know, new square footage, you know, augmenting bedroom, bathroom account, you know, upgrading kitchens entirely, and even, you know, uh, the replacement, you know, or the, you know, the installation of brand new mechanical features to the home. It's really difficult to pin down the list that is all inclusive of everything that you can do because you can virtually take on any renovation inside of the home, you know, uh, on a 203k purchase. I'm sorry, on a 203k, you know, uh, on a 203k loan. However, it is much easier for us to kind of set a definition for what we can do by really defining the things that we can't do because there are some definite things that are you know, not allowed you know, per HUD. The first thing, you got to realize there is a limitation on luxury items. So things such as barbecue pits, outdoor kitchens, exterior hot tubs, and pools, these are things that uh, are not going to be allowed. In terms of swimming pools, we can't do swimming pool installation at all. However, we can do you know limited pool repairs. However, the limitation on pool repairs is going to be $1,500 or less. You're going to be hard pressed to ever find a pool that you can repair for $1,500 or less. I'll tell you that much. But you know certainly you know exterior features, you know tennis courts, you know mostly anything really in terms of you know landscaping, unless it's directly tied to a health or a safety issue with the property in and of itself. You know, uh, fuel, for, uh, photo murals, dumb waiters, you know, satellite dishes. Unfortunately, these things are all examples of different things that are considered luxury items or non-essential items that we can't use FHA 203K funds to actually you know, procure or install for the borrower. Now, overall, with our 203K program, there are two different ways that it can be administered. We have the 203K Streamline program, which is really for light renovations, and then we have our full bear, full 203K, where we use a HUD consultant, and that is the program where we can literally do just about anything. But there are some differences between the two in terms of what kind of work you know can be done, and you know some things that absolutely factor in to the decision on whether or not you would go with a full K or a Streamline K. So let's talk about what makes it, you know. Uh, the lines between the two, and we're going to start that off by talking about the streamline case. Now, the streamline obviously is for easier renos. So, with that being the case, we're going to set the first line in the sand for a determining factor to be a financial one. And if you look at the you know the top right hand portion of the slide here, you can see that our line in the sand, our line of demarcation is at thirty-five thousand dollars. So, at thirty-five thousand dollars or more in terms of our repair escrow, we would automatically convert the loan to being a full K. But that is the limitation for what we can have in you know, our total repair escrow for a streamlined 203K. 
Now, the next line of uh, next line of the same is going to be based on scope of work. All right. So anything that we would consider a major repair, and a major repair, you know, uh, you know general guidelines for how we would define that. Anything that is a structural, you know, repair to the property, like the moving or the elimination of a load-bearing wall, any kind of structural addition to the property where we're going to add on actual square footage to the property itself, if we're going to augment the property's foundation at all, it's going to be considered structural. Uh, any kind of major landscaping, so if we're doing any kind of pool repairs or let's say the reparation of a retaining wall outside of the property, we would consider that to be a, um, you know, a major repair as well. Or any time the borrower has to make use of architectural or engineering plans and specifications on the overall, you know, on the overall project, we would consider any of that to be a major, you know, uh, repair, and we would also require that to be a full 203k, without regard to whatever, you know, to the actual amount of the bid in and of itself. Now, our full K literally is for everything else. If we have, you know, a project that is over, that is at or over thirty-five thousand dollars, you know, for you know for the total repair budget. Or if we're going to do the major, you know, even the installation of a septic system, any type of pool repairs, or any structural work to the property whatsoever, we go for the full K because that's where we get maximum protection to the borrower. And trust me, there's never going to be a single instance where a borrower is going to say, you know what, we didn't need all that protection. You know, in the end, they'll be glad that they have it. Now, the one major thing I want you to realize, most people think that, oh my God, there's such a big difference between the full and the streamlined 203K. And that's not really the case. The qualifications for the program remain exactly the same in terms of the mortgage. So all of your credit qualifying income assets, everything remains the same in terms of how you process the actual mortgage. The real difference is going to be in, you know, uh, getting your renovation documents together. Uh, there is one more required document for a full K, and that's really the specification of repairs report from the consultant. That's the big difference, you know, overall in setup between the two. But there's also a major difference in how they're administered in the end. You know, when it comes down to the actual work being done, we will get to those differences in just a couple of slides. But let's talk about overall getting on ready first in general eligibility. Now, for those of you that are familiar with you know our FHA program, you're going to be very familiar and comfortable with how this is all set up in terms of LTVs. Our maximum purchase LTV is the same as the standard you know, maximum purchase LTV for an FHA loan, so that's 96.5%. You know, so borrowers will be required to put a minimum of 3.5% down overall. In terms of you know, our refinance, our maximum LTV allowed on a refinance is 97.75%. Now, when I talk about 96.5% and that 3.5% the borrower has to put down, what I need you to realize is that we're not talking about 96.5% of just the purchase price overall because the borrower is going to be financing far more than that. So we're going to look at the total cost of the actual, you know, of the property with its renovation cost, and we're going to talk about that in more detail in just a couple of slides. I promise you, but first, let us continue working with some of our, you know, preconceived notions in terms of, you know, how everything comes together. I do want you to realize that with our FHA program, you're going to get the maximum amount of flexibility in terms of underwriting. So it doesn't have to necessarily be you know, a DU approved eligible for it to go through. We can do manual downgrades in our FHA program. However, there are some specific you know, uh, FICO related and geographic you know, um, related issues that could pop up that I don't really like to put into the slides because these things tend to change and uh, they're kind of fluid. So I would always tell you it is best to absolutely take a look at our most recent guides if you have a loan that isn't exactly going to fit you know, through the DU cookie cutter and may need you know, a, you know, a manual underwrite. For those of you that are already signed up and you have an account executive, they are always great at staying abreast on our most current rules and, uh, and overlays. So by all means, you know, seek these, you know, seek them out, and they will certainly be able to help you, you know, understand exactly how your file fits in, even if it is not an approved eligible. Moving into property eligibility, let's talk about the uh, various types of properties that we can work with. We can absolutely work with single-family residences, because you know uh, that, that's kind of the bread and butter. We can also work with you know two, two, two through four unit properties. Even so, when we are doing conversions. So we can convert a four-unit property to a single family, or we can convert a single family to a two-unit, three-unit, or four-unit, as long as the end result is going to be a property within you know, four units that is acceptable to us. Now, 
for all the subdivisions across America, we can absolutely work. We can absolutely work with PUDs. Uh, HUD approved condos you know, are absolutely fine. However, there is one caveat. There's a limitation to the number of units that can be in any building within the project. This is not designed to work on high-rise condos. So any building inside of the condo project itself, the maximum number of units that can be in any building is limited to four. So keep that in mind, one little important caveat for everyone. Now, in terms of properties that will be considered automatically ineligible, the first thing, any property, any property that does not have, or I'm sorry, that does not have currently and has had a valid certificate of occupancy for the previous 12 months. You need a valid certificate of occupancy now, and it also has it also has had to exist, has had to have existed for the preceding 12 month period. If property does not have that, it will automatically be ineligible. So this is going to automatically include properties that were not completed, you know, and properties that were condemned. They obviously will not have a valid CO. Also. This is not a construction program, so properties are not allowed to be completely and totally demolished down to their foundation. We will not allow that on our 203Ks. So, uh, just things that we are not comfortable with in general, co-ops, modular homes, and mobile or manufactured homes. So please keep that in mind. Obviously, condo hotels are not going to be a part of the mix here. Unique properties such as churches and, you know, and, and uh, lighthouses, those types of things will also be considered automatically ineligible. Working farms or ranches, or really any property that has commercial features to it whatsoever, will be absolutely not allowed and called, you know, and deemed ineligible for our 203K program. Now, let us talk about really how everything comes together in a 203K loan, because I believe that the lack of understanding on how things come together is really part of why this program has such, you know, a bad name in terms of you know, uh, is understanding in general use. So let us try to, uh, you know, bust the myth of overall this program being too difficult, you know, to work through. And let's do that by first identifying all the parts and pieces that you're going to have to be accustomed to working with when you're working on a 203K loan. So we've made a hierarchy chart so we can try to identify all the players and pieces so that you can actually see their relationship and how they work together. So at the top of this chart, we're going to start with the borrower. The borrower is who we all work for in this, you know, in this scenario. And I've heard a lot of different people say that maybe, you know, the borrower has to, you know, absolutely understand terms of construction, property, you know, uh, all the terminology, you know, how construction happens. I'm here to tell you that that's your attitude. You're really missing the boat. The borrower is coming to us paying a premium for a renovation loan, and they are paying for our expertise in these matters. We want to surround them in value and reaffirm that they made a good decision by working with us and by choosing a renovation loan and paying that premium. Therefore, we, are, we should not be requiring them to become an expert in renovation. If that was the case, they wouldn't need us in the first place. So we want to make this process as easy on the borrower and to protect them as humanly possible. The next level down here really is us, Remen Wholesale, the lender. The reason why, we are funding the borrower's dream, their ambition, and we're protecting their money. We're also going to be the ones administering the actual construction project and watching out for every last dime to make sure that their money is spent in the way that, that was actually intended. And now we're going to move down to the next level. That's going to be our individual service providers, our appraiser, our contractor, and in cases where we're doing full Ks, our HUD consultant. Now these individual service providers all provide important pieces to the puzzle to give you a full 203K package. Now the appraiser, I know that um, many of you don't get a chance, you know, an opportunity to interact, to interact with as much as we did in the recent past. However, it is important that you understand the, you know, how the appraisal is done in a 203K loan, so that this way you can explain that situation to the borrower as best as possible. The contractors are very necessary evil. We don't allow self-help in our administration of a 203K loan. Since that is the case, they are the most necessary evil of all, and your borrower certainly needs to understand how the relationship between them and the contractor is designed to work. And last but not least, certainly the HUD consultant. Everyone looks at the HUD consultant and more than likely imagines this is just an extra complication. However, I'm going to tell you that could not be further from the actual truth. The HUD consultant is really, you know, one of the most value enriching, you know, portions of the 203K program that you could possibly imagine. And we're going to talk about that in great detail in just a couple of moments, but we're going to start off 
by working with our appraiser. Now, from that last slide, as we're talking about all those different service providers, the one thing I want you to realize, the reason why there's no little individual box for the broker, and if we just go back to it for just a single second, the reason why there's no box for you, the actual individual broker, is for one very important reason. You are the thin line that absolutely connects everything back to the bar. You are that nexus. You are the source of connection. So it's up to you to make sure that the borrower understands everyone's roles and understands the action as it is happening. And in order for you to be able to explain it to the borrower, you need to understand that information all you know for yourself. I just wanted to uh, take a moment to go back and be able to point that out since I failed to do so as we went through the slide the first time. Now to talk about our first service provider, the appraiser, and everything that we look at with our appraisal in and of itself. Let us start off by saying this: We are not doing, you know, a standard, you know, a standard HUD appraisal, you know, for a two or three, you know, for a two or three B loan. We are doing a two or three K appraisal, and here are the, and here's what makes a two or three K appraisal different. We are not going to, you know, be primarily concerned with the property as its value. All right, on a two or three K purchase, we don't even, you know, we don't even factor in the as is value. The appraiser is to understand that we're going to assume that the actual as is price is our purchase price on a, a two or three K purchase. So that is you know one important measure right there. Next, it's going to be completed on a subject to basis. So what happens is you want to order your appraisal after you already have your either your contractor's bid or your specification of repairs report from your HUD consultant back so they can actually look at the property and include all the new features and amenities that are going to go into the property post renovation. They're then going to give us a value subject to that work being done and they're going to actually include the bid as part of that appraisal work, as part of the appraisal report in and of itself. So our value is going to be based on the properties after improvement or future value. On a refinance, things are a little bit different. We do include the as-is value on a refinance. So you know the appraiser will give you your as-is value, but he will ultimately complete the actual appraisal subject to just as he did with the purchase, and we're going to see we're going to still see the entire renovation project being neatly defined, you know, inside of the appraisal report itself. Now, with that being said. You know you have a choice of AMCs that you can work with. Please take a look at the following list. These are all of, you know this is a list or a recent list of you know uh, of our approved AMCs that you can work with. This list is something that slides and grows all the time. So you know I'm sure by now, even though I put this list together just a, you know a month or two ago, I'm sure there probably are a couple of new entries. Always take a look you know at our webpage so that you can see our current list of you know allowable AMCs for your, you know, for your FHA, you know, uh, for your FHA loans. But with that said, you always want to make sure when ordering your 203K appraisal that you absolutely have your bid or your SOR back so that your appraiser can absolutely make sure that they include all of the, you know, information from the renovation into the appraisal report itself. Now, in terms of your contract, we said earlier, he is the necessary evil, the one thing that we must have in order to make all of this work out. Let us tell you the way that we would know, that we define the relationship with our contractor so that we have a very easygoing you know, understanding so that everybody can be on the same page. First and foremost, we like to work with one contractor that's going to be the general contractor that's going to be in charge of the entire renovation happening on the subject property. So they're going to give us a bid that's inclusive of all work that's being performed on the subject property. This is going to include work that's being performed by subcontractors. Remin holes they will only deal directly with the one general contractor. And this is going to include the remittance of funds. So the general contractor will then have to subsequently remit payment to all of the subcontractors for the work that they have performed. All right. Now, the contractor will have to make sure that he has sufficient licensing and insurance to carry out the work. None of you have to worry about becoming experts in the local, in your local municipality and your rules for contracting. We have an entire department here, our renovation concierge desk, that will take a look at all of your contractor documents and make sure that they have the proper insurances and licensing to complete the work on the subject property. Okay. Now, 
we cannot recommend. I'm sorry. We do recommend that the contract that the borrower get more than one bid from one contractor. However, we can't require them to do so. Since that is the case, it is absolutely you know of tantamount importance, and that the contractor you know uh, give us back a good bid because we need to you know certainly be able to nail down that relationship and define it. So we certainly do have rules in regards to our minimum requirement of submission whenever you're submitting a bid to us in order for us to accept it. So let us now talk about what we require to see on a bid. Now the first thing about a contracting company is that we need to be able to identify them as a legal business entity first and foremost. With that said, please understand that your bid cannot come in on a blank sheet of paper that was handwritten you know, or on a cocktail napkin. We have to have a bid that's actually done on letterhead with full identifying information for the company. So that must include the full legal business name, address, and phone number for that business. You know, some things that we would like to see considering it is 2015 and all, it would be great to see a URL for the business and, and or an email address considering most businesses, you know, it, it, it's hard to imagine even operating without being able to stay in contact, you know, um, electronically. Getting into the actual identifying information for the job itself, on the bid we have to see that the actual you know, a project address is the same as a subject property address listed on our mortgage application. Okay, the clients or customers listed on the bid must also be the clients, I'm sorry, the borrowers listed on our mortgage application. And certainly we need to see that the bid has an estimated start and completion date so that we understand that the actual contractor can complete the work within the time frame that we allow to get our renovations completed after closing. Inside of the body of the bid, we need to see a breakdown in terms of material and labor costs. All right? In the description of the work on each individual line item, we should also see a breakdown between the actual materials used and then the labor required for the installation of said materials. This is going to be something that absolutely helps eliminate confusion between the borrower and the contractor over the scope of work because we want to make sure that the borrower feels absolutely sound and secure in their decisions and we want to ensure we want to enforce the idea that we're going to have a very solid agreement over the actual you know, renovation plan moving forward. We don't want to give any wiggle room to any parties to say, hey, this or that was not actually included in the bid. We want it to be implicit and very clear to understand. At the bottom of your bid, it is important to see that the bid has been dated and executed by all parties. Bids need to be dated, and this is for a very important reason. There is a great possibility that during the course of working on the renovation itself, you're going to have opportunities where the bid will you know, change as you're, you know, as you're working on the file and preparing for submission. We want to make sure that we are all aware and in agreement on what the most recent bid was and the scope, and the, you know, the scope of work that's actually included and described on that bid. We don't want to have you know, any confusion on that front at all. So it's important that your bid be dated and, you know, signed and executed by all parties. So now let us talk about our next service provider. That's going to be your HUD consultant. And your HUD consultant is, again, one of the biggest of actual value-adding pieces in this entire process. So the first thing that your HUD consultant does is that they come out and actually make an on-site inspection of the subject property and they're going to actually hold on to the contractor's bid while they're looking at it because they're going to take into consideration all the repairs that the contractor has written up that will be performed on the property in and of itself. But as the contractor, sorry, as the consultant looks at the property, he's also going to, you know, make himself, you know, or herself aware of any HUD minimum property standard issues that are uh, that are existing in the property and to make sure that those things are also included inside of the scope of work itself. The reason why, it is much better to know about these deficiencies and that they must be addressed and included in our renovation plan up front as opposed to having them pop up during underwriting and uh, you know further disillusioning the borrower. It's much better to become aware of those things, to include them in the plan you know, from the very beginning. All right, the next actual step, the consultant's going to give back a report called the Specification of Repairs, which at this point I will refer to as the SOR because it's the mortgage business. We love acronyms because we're, you know, kind of lazy. So 
so your SOR report is absolutely going to contain all of the, uh, you know, it's going to absolutely contain all of the information from that initial consultation by the consultant. It's going to have all of the contractors, you know, intended repairs, and then any other repairs as they noted that would be needed. It's also going to have a fair market evaluation of what the price of the job should be, which can be especially important if the borrower only received one bid. Overall, we're going to err on the side of caution. That's going to mean leaning more heavily toward the price estimation by the consultant. The consultant works with, you know, uh, works on, you know, job sites and looks at bids from several contractors in the area. So they have a great idea of what the actual fair market price is for that individual area, and that's the reason why we will tend to side with the consultant in terms, you know, of their, you know, of their vision of the cost. Plus. You know, there is a little bit of a practice out there among some contractors where they try to be aggressive and they underbid just to win a job. And this is going to be great protection against that particular practice. You know, if you have a, you know, a contractor that maybe was a little light on work and was definitely trying to make sure that they procured a contract for this particular, you know, for this particular renovation. Next, after working with that, once the loan is actually closed, the consultant's job is not done. They actually come back and make on-site inspections of the work as it's actually being done because the contractor's only paid on a full K for work that's already been completed. So we have to make progress payments. And since we have that arrangement, before we send the draw out to the contractor, the consultant has to come in and let us know that the work has been completed in a satisfactory manner. This is going to be a great service to the borrower because it gives them the feeling of having an actual advocate that is there to actually ascertain whether or not the contractor is, is, is actually performing in an acceptable manner. For us as a lender, and for you as well as the originator, this is going to really help us be protected from being in the middle of a quality of work dispute, which is really a subjective dispute between the contractor and the borrower. None of us want to be woken up or, or, or taken out of our normal activities on a weekend because the borrower is, is concerned whether or not you know, quality tile work is being applied in their bathroom. Having the consultant means that there's going to be a person there as a complete and total third party that's, in the, that's impartial to everyone to make that determination, and that really is going to help us, you know, keep everyone honest, you know, so to speak. So with that being said, that adds a great, tr a tremendous amount of value to everyone. It gives, you know, the borrower the sense of actually having an advocate that's there for them. It also helps the contractor know that their work is going to be evaluated fairly, you know, um, so it really helps keep everybody, you know, directly in line. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with how to find a HUD consultant, it could not be easier. You really go to the link that you can see here on the last bullet point in this particular slide, and HUD has basically a search engine. You're going to go to that web page, you put in your geographic information, and a list of approved you know, consultants will populate. The borrower can use anybody from that list that they would like. Now, even on your streamlined 203Ks, where you wouldn't need a full SOR, or any situation where you're, you know, currently unsure of, as to uh, which way you would go, you can also get what's called the Preliminary Feasibility Analysis Report from your HUD consultant. Now, this is going to be a much cheaper report because it's much shorter. This report is actually going to make the borrower aware of all of the deficiencies in the property in terms of health and safety standards and HUD minimum property standards. So they're going to see exactly how much work it will take to make the property livable and financeable from an FHA standpoint. So if you have a situation where, the, where you have a property seller that really thinks that the property is you know, deserving of a top of the market price and you know that it's absolutely fine, you can use a, pre a preliminary feasibility analysis report really as a bargaining chip to help open the property seller's eyes as to the deficiencies in the property and why you know some kind of just you know some kind of reduction in price would absolutely be a you know a, you know, a sound option because of the work that it's going to take to just have the property be financeable in the first place. But for our standard SOR, this is going to be a report that's a little bit more expensive. The actual cost of the SOR itself is going to be based primarily on the amount of the write-up given by the HUD consultant. So take a look at the chart down here at the bottom of this particular page. On the chart, you can see some corresponding, you know, write-up costs, and then the fee charged by the consultant. You know, um, 
obviously I can't give you an exact you know, promise that these are the fees that will definitely be charged by every HUD consultant across the country. They are independent third-party service providers after all, but you can use this chart as a great guide for the most part. You know, well, you will see prices that you know generally follow the format that you can see here. The thing that's important for you all to realize, the upfront fee charged by the consultant absolutely is a fee that needs to be captured on your GFE and, uh, and made a part of your APR. So please be aware of that and make sure that you are properly disclosing it. One of the great things about our process here at Remen Wholesale is that we're one of the few lenders that does actually give you some guidance on how to disclose these things and actually all of the you know additional costs and fees that are common to your renovation loans on our renovation worksheet that you can find in our broker portal. So for any of you that are not signed up with us, absolutely, you know, uh, you can sign up and get into our broker portal. And for every single one of our renovation loans, you're actually you are required to use that renovation worksheet so that you can make sure that your GFE has been properly set up. So now that we've talked about that in particular, let us talk about our repair escrow budget and what we are allowed to actually have in it. For our repair escrow budget, the first thing that we can absolutely include is going to be the entire amount you know, of the contractor's bid. We're going to absolutely be able you know, to, you know, to place that money in escrow so that we can ensure that we can properly pay off the contractor for all services provided. Next, we're going to make room for a contingency reserve. All 203K loans are required to have, at bare minimum, a 10% contingency reserve. Now there are several risk characteristics with the property that could cause either your HUD consultant or our underwriter to, you know, to increase that contingency reserve up to 20%. However, for the most part, you know, most properties in average condition that don't have, you know, excessive, you know, uh, problems when one of them is um, when you're buying, let's say, a property and the utilities are not on, that would automatically give you a, a need for a 15% contingency. But for a property that's in average condition, all you, you know, all utilities are on. You know, we're not expecting too much. Absolutely, you can expect that 10% you know, contingency to be you know, at baseline as to what we're going to include. Now we talked about the possibility of having you know, the consultant come back and make inspections while the work is being performed. All those draw inspection fees by the you know, by the consultant absolutely can be included in our repair escrow budget. And since we're using one. In, on any of our full case where the consultant says that the property will be uninhabitable, we will be able to actually you know, escrow a corresponding amount of mortgage payments for the time frame that the consultant says the property will be uninhabitable during the renovation for up to six months of mortgage payments you know, going forward. We can also include the cost of the necessary title update. You know, at the end of the process, we make sure that there basically aren't any new mechanics lien to add to the borrower's property. So the cost of that title rundown can be absolutely included. Also, any resulting costs from the borrower needing to make um, architectural or engineering plans and specs to carry out the renovation itself. And certainly now, last but not least, the cost of permits can also be included in our repair escrow budget. Now, overall, I've made some reference to forms. You know, uh, forms are the necessary evil of mortgage lending. You can't have a program without them. With that being the case, I want you to realize that we make it as easy for you as humanly possible. We keep all of our forms in one place. You can go to our webpage, www.remonwholesale.com, and you can take a look at our FHA forms. You'll see all of the 203K forms listed neatly in one section. If you are doing a full K, you'll see that some of the form names you know, say full K with consultant. And then if you're doing a streamline, those, certain, you know, uh, those same forms that have that, that, have that differentiation in the name will then say streamline you know, or, or, or K without a consultant, and you can just pick the one that is most appropriate to your individual situation. Now let's talk about the most important of all of those forms, and that is probably the one that is the most misunderstood and the most feared in all of the 203K you know, uh, landscape. That's the maximum mortgage worksheet. Now one thing I want you to all to bear in mind, I mentioned the helpful worksheet that we have in our broker portal, which is our renovation worksheet. That is not a substitute for the, your MMW. You know, that is something that is designed to help you disclose properly 
this is what's going to actually help you determine what your you know what your actual loan amount should be you know uh, for your 203k loan everyone thinks that this form is very obtuse very difficult and you know very hard to understand I'm here to tell you it, it really couldn't be further from the truth but we're not going to look at it overall with this is this big confusing form let's take a nice look at it where we're going to simplify it and just kind of look at the middle section and we're going to work through it piece by piece so you, you can really see how this form in general comes together okay so on your MMW you're going to start with section A and you're really going to work from left to right so we're working through a purchase example so right now we're going to put in our, our contract sales price which is 175 all right, so 175,000 is going to go in box A1. All right, on a purchase, we're going to assume that our as-is value is the same as our purchase price, so that gets repeated in box A2. All right. Next, we're going to take what we speculate our after improvement value will be, and we're going to put that in box A3. Okay. Uh, our overrun on a 203k, which is basically 110 percent of your after improvement value, you know, and this is basically in case the property fails to appraise is literally 110% of your after improvement value. So you multiply your after improvement value, in this case it's 235 by 110%, and the result of that is 258,500. You put that in box four, okay? Next, you can take all of your uh, estimated closing costs and your prepaid, and you can throw that in the section A5. Okay, so section A is now done. Now, we're gonna move down into section B. Section B describes all of our repair costs. So we're going to start by taking our hard cost, which is going to be the total amount from your contractor's bid. You're going to put that in box B1. Next, you're going to calculate your contingency reserve. At base, we always expect it to be at a minimum of 10%, so we're going to first take that 10% and apply that to box B2. In this case, we had a $45,000 bid, so it leaves a contingency reserve of $4,500. Now we're going to look at the cost of the inspections by the consultant. In this particular case, we had a consultant charging $250 for three inspections. Okay, so we take that $750. We're going to put that in box B3. The borrower, you know, the consultant did not say that the property would be uninhabitable, so we don't have the ability to to mortgage. I'm sorry, to escrow any mortgage payments, so that amount remains at zero. And in box five. We're going to make a subtotal, so $50,250 is our subtotal when we add together our first three costs. Next, we're going to look at uh, some costs that can be paid at the table. Uh, if there was any part of the consultant's fee that wasn't paid by the borrower, we would put that in box B7. Okay? In this case, the borrower paid the entire amount of the, of the upfront consultation you know, to the consultant already outside of closing, so there is no need to actually include that on our MMW. They didn't have to make any architectural or, or engineering plans and specs, so there's no cost there either. And also the cost of permits were built into the cost of the bid, so we don't have them doled out separately here as well. So in boxes six through nine, we didn't incur any other fees, so our subtotal in box 10 remains the same, $50,250. All right, now here's something that tends to confuse a lot of people, the supplemental origination fee. If you are working with us as a broker, you are not allowed to charge a supplemental origination fee. And here's another piece of information for you. Remnant Wholesale does not charge one either. So since there is no supplemental, origin, so, since there is no supplemental origination fee being charged, there's no need for you to include one on your worksheet. We also do not charge a discount for the repair cost. You are not allowed to charge one either. So that's going to remain the same. So as we're looking through our subtotal, you know, up until this point, there are no additional fees, you know, being paid at the table. There are also no supplemental costs involved. So our subtotal remained the same. Fifty thousand two hundred and fifty dollars is the actual, you know, complete total of all of your renovation costs. So now, on the next step, we're going to move to section C of the actual worksheet. In section C, we're going to start to actually compare our overall cost to purchase the property versus the cost, I'm sorry, versus the, you know, the value of the property after improvement. In a purchase, we wind up using the lesser of these two values. So what we're going to do is first add together our purchase price, our contract sales price, which is $175,000, and 
our renovation budget of $50,250. This gives us a value of $225,250. That's our total acquisition cost, okay, the cost to acquire and renovate the property. We're going to compare that renovation cost, that, I'm sorry, that total acquisition cost to our after improved value. In this particular case, the way it should be, your after improvement value should typically be higher than your total acquisition cost. As long as that's the case, we can easily now take our total acquisition cost, make that the predominant value for our transaction. And now we are going to be able to determine you know, our maximum LTV. So 96.5% is the maximum LTV that you can factor you know, on any you know, on, on any tool, I'm sorry, on any FHA purchase. So that being the case, 96.5% of $225,250 is $217,366, sorry, $217,366.25. So quite literally, the borrower is going to be making 3.5% of $225,250. So with a mortgage amount at $217,366, they will be bringing the balance as the down payment. Now, moving down to the bottom, we're going to factor in the upfront MIP. So you take your MIP factor of 1.75%. Your calculated upfront MIP in Section F is now $3,803.91. You add that into your loan amount, so that gives you a total loan amount with upfront MIP of $221,170.16. Now, I know a lot of people tend to ask, does the upfront MIP affect the borrower's you know, down payment? Not at all. Our base mortgage amount in terms of the actual total acquisition cost of the property is you know, um, at $225,250, and they're borrowing 96.5% of that. The $3,800 of the upfront MIP is going to be financed directly on top of the loan amount, which is why it gets added in. So our total loan amount is $221,170.16. So it completely does not disturb the you know the amount of the borrower's you know expected contribution at the table. But as you can see, if you look at the overall worksheet section by section and just kind of work through it, you can see how everything comes together. It is not very difficult, and it can actually be very simple to get through. You know, if you actually you know take everything you know about the mortgage business and just apply it logically step by step. So where does that leave us in terms of getting your file together? I'm going to tell you, when you're starting off on making a new 203k loan, it's always best to start at the very beginning, and that's remembering that this is a standard 203, you know, 203b loan, you know, at its onset. So you're going to need to build your entire credit package the way you normally would. So get all of your credit docs together to make your credit package. The next step is going to be getting together your renovation documents. Now I can tell you. The way that the majority of people make renovation lending difficult on themselves is by trying to come up with you know, a minimum standard and just trying to not deal with the renovation documents up front. By doing this, you're only going to create a situation where you're only going to see more conditions and changing conditions later on. Get your renovation documents together as you're, as you're assembling your package. Submit your package with your full credit package and all of your renovation docs. Okay, so get all the renovation disclosures signed. Get your contractor's docs in. Send both sides of that package in together at the same time. By doing this, you're only going to make things easier for yourself, and I will tell you exactly how. When your loans come into Remen Wholesale, your credit documents are going to be, you know, of course, reviewed by our underwriting department. However, your contractor documents are going to be sent to our renovation concierge desk. They are going to look at your 203K disclosures, your bid, your SOR, and once your appraisal is available, the appraisal as well. All right, now, by looking at all those contractor documents up front, as your underwriter is finishing your overall approval, they will also be finished with a review of your contractor's documents. They'll be able to give you all of our required renovation stipulations right up front so that they can be on your initial approval, which means that when you get your approval back, it will be unified with all of your credit conditions as well with your renovation conditions and not with a bunch of boilerplate standard renovation conditions that will only need to be revised as the real documents come in. Let's not create that chaos by you know, uh, feeling that you've been re-stipped because 
you've had generic renovation stipulations on your approval right up until you know two weeks to closing. But then once you sent in all your contractor docs, they all changed. Let's not do that to yourselves. Let's make this as easy and as efficient as possible. Let's send in all those docs at the very beginning and make this process as easy on you and your borrower as humanly possible. Now, granted, I know many of you will find it much easier to deal with the appraisal process after submission. That being the case, you know, you're going to order your appraisal after the loan's already submitted. However, when your appraisal comes back in, you're going to have to realize, you know, some absolute realities on two or three K appraising. If it's a purchase and there is an as is value listed on the appraisal, you're going to have to um, you know make sure that we all, that your borrower understands how that impacts the deal. Because if the as is value comes back less than your purchase price, there there will be a negative impact and there's no way around it once it's already been seen and it's on the appraisal report in and of itself. If the evaluation comes back low on a refinance also, you know, you're gonna to have to explain to the borrower, you know, what happens, how the overrun at the hundred and ten percent works, so that they can feel comfortable with the process or at least feel comfortable in knowing that you understand it and that you can help them, you'll get through it. But last but not least, when you take everything and get all the documents in up front, you make this process easy on yourself and you not cut any corners you will absolutely get through this as efficiently as humanly possible without spinning your wheels or feeling like you're in an endless you know, re-stipping situation where you're handing things in and you're just watching your condition sheet change as opposed to watching the conditions clear out. So with all of that said, really what we have with the 203K loan in process, in terms of going through the origination, we have the same exact process that you've always come to expect when you're working with us. At the start, you're going to upload your Fannie Mae 3.2 into our broker portal. You're then going to run the AUS through the broker portal as you normally would. You're going to upload all your loan docs in the Blitz docs so they can be ready. And this should be inclusive of all your reno docs as well to make this process easy for you. You're going to get your loan decision back. If you, you know, send in all your rental docs as well, it's going to not just have a bunch of generic boilerplate rental conditions. It's going to have all your specific for this scenario credit underwriting conditions as well as the renovation conditions as well. And you're going to have an approval that you can work on clearing, you know, from the you know from the onset. And you're going to go through your conditional you know uh, you know clearing process as you always would. You're going to submit your conditions, and hopefully they don't raise more questions you know than they've answered. You want to get those conditions cleared out, and then we're going to move into clearance so that you can close. With that said, let me tell you about you know, our renovation concierge desk and why this makes such a big difference. Now, once your loans go into closing, you know, uh, you're really going to have you know, an opportunity to see where we shine as a renovation lending partner, you know, as opposed to even some of the other banks and the top five, because we do direct administration. That renovation concierge desk that I mentioned to you that's so involved in the actual origination process when your loan is first uh, you know, evaluated for underwriting, they remain involved even after the loan is closed. So let's talk about the process and how everything works once the loan actually gets into closing. Now, when you're closing your renovation loan, as you would normally expect with any other mortgage, all of your mortgage-related fees and costs are all paid off. The only money that's held on to is the money that's being put into escrow for the renovation budget itself. Okay, so everything else is absolutely paid out. On a full 203K loan, there is no seed money or startup money or there's no disbursement at close to the contractor. Okay, it's, it's very important that you all realize that. On a full K, the, the contractor gets no money up front. They're only paid for work as it is completed. So the actual process that, that takes place is they start the job. And certainly they have to begin the work within 30 days of closing, but not before the expiration of any applicable you know, periods, you know, any, any applicable waiting periods you know, as uh, legally mandated. But they have to start that process, and then they call for an inspection by the consultant. The consultant comes out, they give us, you know, on the SOR, they show us the line item completion percentage of each line item in the bid itself, and then we make payment for that specific you know, uh, you know, commiserate with that ex ex that, that ex explicit completion percentage. Now, each of the disbursements to the contractor will be subjected to a 10% holdback. So, 10% of the money allotted for that draw will be held here, and the entire balance of all those holdbacks 
will not be given to the contractor until the final inspection has come back saying that the job is entirely completed. Now this is important because it's another way of protecting the borrower's money. By doing this, we're going to eliminate that tendency by some contractors to you know, take six weeks to get through the last three days of work because they don't have much of an interest in coming back to finish because they've gotten most of their money already. By knowing they have a couple thousand dollars that's been saving up in a kitty, and the only way they can get it is by finishing the job, they will come back and do the two days of work, typically within two days. So this is another you know, important factor in protecting the borrower's money. Now, overall, the, pro the, you know, the process by which you know, all these inspection reports are, you know, are handled is all handled directly here by our renovation concierge desk because we hold the money in escrow for the borrower and then we disperse all payments and we you know, process all of the incoming paperwork. Our renovation concierge desk is a department that handles all of that. This is not a third party service. These are all people that are employed directly by Rem and Wholesale. Now the great thing about that, it greatly reduces the amount of confusion and friction that a lot of people will complain about in terms of talking about renovation loans. They say that it just takes too long for contractors to get paid and that they don't want to do it. The bottom line here, we're holding the money in escrow. The contractor knows that the money is here to complete the job and since we're directly processing everything, it takes us days to get checks out as opposed to weeks as it does with other lenders. All right. Now things are a little bit different in admin when we're talking about our streamlined 203K and I will tell you the difference. On a streamlined 203K, there are only two draws. At closing, the contractor actually gets 50% of their repair estimate to actually start the job and there's no additional money until the job is completed. Once the job is complete, we send the original appraiser out to make a final inspection. If the final inspection passes, we then remit the balance to the contractor at that particular point in time. But you know, that is really you know, the difference between the administration between a full K and a streamlined 203K. For that, we've talked about both programs and how they come out in the end. Let's really encapsulate the difference between our full K and our streamlined K, and we're going to start with the full K. On our full 203K, we are able to work with just about any project that the borrower wants to take on inside of the home as long as they are eligible renovations that can be done within a 203K loan. Now, the minimum amount that we can, you know, that we can finance for a full K really is, you know, five thousand dollars. However, there isn't really a true maximum for you to really consider. On a 203K you know, uh, full, you absolutely must use a HUD consultant. You know, there's no other way to go about it. However, the use of the HUD consultant is going to give us the ability to escrow mortgage payments for the borrower you know, for up to six months as long as the, the HUD consultant says in his report that the property will be uninhabitable during the course of the renovation. We have a maximum number of draws that can be called for by the HUD consultant, that number is set at a maximum of five. There is never an initial draw to the contractor on a full 203K. They get no money up front. They're only paid progress payments as the work is actually being done. And in terms of our timeline for completion, we give the contractor five months to actually complete the work from closing. Now on a streamlined 203K, things are a little bit different. This is a program that is really for more simple renovations. So therefore, you know, uh, we have an, an absolute limitation in terms of what can be financed. We set that line in the sand in terms of overall, you know, dollar amount to be $35,000. So if our repair escrow amount is $35,000 or less, we will be able to keep the loan as a streamlined 203K. There is no HUD consultant required on a streamlined 203K. But that also means that there's also no ability for us to escrow mortgage payments in a streamlined 203K. Our maximum number of draws for a streamlined 203K is set at two, with the initial draw being 50% of the repair estimate amount, with the balance being paid after a successful final inspection by the original appraiser. Last but not least, we give a maximum timeline to complete the work at four months on a 203K streamline. And what I want you to realize for those timelines for completion, for both the streamline and the full 203K, this is not inclusive of all the time that's been given to us by HUD to have final delivery of the loan. We have truncated that timeline 
down so that we can inform the contractor that they're basically in a sudden death period and then offer them extensions so that we can manage them into finishing on time or at least you know, before the you know, full expiration of all the time given to us by HUD. I also want to take the time to remind you all again that we do direct administration here. And this is really going to be one of the hugest differentiating factors between you selling our product and some, you know, and that of some other lenders. Since we administer directly, we cut down those frustrating timelines where everyone is complaining about checks not being cut. All those horror stories that you have heard about it taking you know, weeks and months to get money to a contractor, most of them stem from problems between a third party administrator and the original lender. Since we've eliminated that entire loop you know, from our process, we are streamlined and we are absolutely more efficient. For any of you that are not approved lending partners with REM and Wholesale, you could not pick a better lending partner to work with in terms of your in terms of you know, renovation lending. You know, aside from our sterling reputation in terms of being able to provide superior service, we take that seriously, both on the front end of the loan while you're originating it, and then also in the end by continuing to serve it directly, service it directly, you know, with our own actual people. We give you a lot of support and we are absolutely here to help you. We have a help desk that is here to help, you know, with any issues that arise with your loan as it's in process. You know, aside from that particular, you know, uh, you know you know, that particular queue where you can escalate issues. Our renovation concierge desk is absolutely there. So this way you don't have one underwriter trying to you know, really be you know, knowledgeable in both you know, credit risk analytics as well as you know, uh, you know, contracting codes in some obscure county in the middle of Atlanta, you know, sorry, or in the middle of Georgia. It's not feasible to really have you know, one person be an expert on all things, so we staff and have a department of people that can truly be experts in that particular area so that we can get your renovation loans through faster. And last but not least, you certainly have the support of me. I'm not just a talking head that's here to give you this particular presentation. You can reach out to me, and I will certainly help you understand you know, your scenarios, and I and will work with you to answer questions that you have about the program, our process, and our overlays. But the bottom line is we are absolutely here to help you. So at this point, I'd like to thank you all for strapping in and working with me today and going through this entire process. It has really been a pleasure to, you know, to be able to present to you. Certainly, any questions that have accumulated in our question pane, we are going to send out you know, a lovely document you know, with answers you know, to your questions. Again, I want to tell you all, I appreciate you being here with me this afternoon. Please, by all means. You know, if you have questions, you can email them to me directly, or you can absolutely include them you know, on our question pane. And last but not least, I want to wish you all you know, happy hunting out there, and I look forward to working with you in the future.